we're back. Five guys in a Bible. Uh, we've certainly missed you all. It's been a long time. Hope that uh, some people have missed us. Uh, you probably forgot about us. I don't know in particular, but at, at any rate, uh, we've been presented with the question uh, about baptism. And the question is, is this. It says, baptism is associated with church membership, right? Then would those baptized by John before the church have to be rebaptized? What's the difference between his baptism and ours? All right, so that's the question, and we're going to head to Jason Schultz first. Jason? Uh, well, I think the best way to start answering that question is to understand a little bit about John the Baptist. Um, it's interesting, I think, if we ask most people, you know, what miraculous birth begins the story of the Gospels? Everybody's going to answer Jesus. Hardly anybody would answer that it was John the Baptist, but really, that's where the story starts. If you uh, read Luke's Gospel, you know, the Hebrews have been waiting uh, 400 years since the end of the Old Testament, and there was a promise in the very last book of the Old Testament, Malachi. There was a promise that God would send a man, and he's described as he'd be a, a lone voice crying in the wilderness, preparing a pathway for Jehovah and, and making a, a straight road for his coming. And then, you know, 400 years later, the gospel story opens with an, this old man named Zacharias serving in the temple. And an angel appears to him and says, you know, thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name John. And it was just so unlikely that Zacharias and Elizabeth in, in the old, old age that they were would have a son. But that's exactly what happened. And, you know, God had big plans for him. That was that was John the Baptist. He essentially grew up, we know, um, Elizabeth and Jesus' mother Mary were cousins. So John essentially is like a cousin of Jesus. And Luke's gospel is the only one that tells us that story. Um, Matthew and, and Mark just introduce him as a full-grown man. Boom, there he is. Here's his ministry. He's uh, preaching repentance and baptizing. But I think one of the statements about John that's very important comes from the way John's gospel, different John, by the way, John's gospel introduces him in John 1, 6, just says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And really the first step in understanding John's baptism and, and what it means for is compared to our baptism today is to know that he was the fulfillment of a long-awaited Old Testament promise, and he had authority directly from God to preach repentance and baptize all of those who obeyed that message, who heard that message of repentance and repented and believed in the Messiah that would come. He's, his authority came directly from God to do that. That's the first step in understanding about John's baptism and, and what the church's baptism is today. That will let somebody else kind of develop his baptism or our baptism a little bit. Okay, that moves us over to Todd then. Todd, we'll let you take it from here. What was the question? I mean, I, I just got lost right there. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I pick on Jason. That's what I do. You people that haven't watched in months, you don't know that I pick on Jason, but I do. Maybe we got some new viewers that don't know, but I live to pick on Jason. So that's what's going to happen. I enjoy it. He enjoys it. My wife enjoys it. Um. I, I'm going to pick up where Jason sort of left off. There was a man set from God whose name was John. Well, I, I think God himself, you know, authoring the scriptures, who he is, declares that John has a special authority, a special mission, if you want to use that. John was the man sent to establish New Testament baptism. I, I don't believe there's anybody else Christ could have gone to to be baptized instead of John. So I, I, and I think most people would agree with that. You know, he was the one sent to lay the foundation work for the New Testament church. The question is, since baptism is associated with church membership, 
and John was baptized, and I, I'm reading this in, but I assume this is what they mean. John was baptizing prior to Jesus starting his church, which, by the way, he did during his earthly ministry. Mm-hmm. Why didn't the disciples of John have to be rebaptized? Well, I, and is it different from our baptism today? Well, I, I've, I went back today while I had a chance and looked at a few old Baptist confessions of faith just to see if they differed somehow from my position here, and they don't. Uh, I believe baptism is a prerequisite to church membership. John baptized and made these people ready for church membership. He, he was sent by God to do that. So having been baptized by John, Jesus having been baptized by John as the chief cornerstone himself, and the apostles having been baptized by John, Jesus sat into the church first, the apostles who had authoritative baptism from John. So what do we see? We see them being baptized added to the church. Baptism is a prerequisite for church membership. I think it's the same thing today. So I I don't see any difference personally between John's baptism and, you know, we have zero record of any of them ever being rebaptized. And I I think clearly they were not rebaptized. So I think John's baptism is valid. And I think when baptism is properly performed today, it is still the same baptism that God sent John to do. And that's that's my three cents. There may have been more than two, but that's what I got. <laughs> that takes us up to Mark Campbell. <laughs> Mark. Well, I'm not really a whole lot to add other than I'll, I'll add this. There was a time when um, they were questioning Christ on his authority. And um, Luke 20, verse 2, and they spake unto him, saying, Tell us by what authority doest thou these things, or who is he that gave thee this authority? And in his usually wise way, he answers them and said, I'll ask of you one thing, and answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? They reasoned with themselves, saying, if, if we say from heaven, he will say, Why then you believe him not? But and if we say of men, all the people will stone us, for they be persuaded that John was a prophet. Um, then they answered that they could talk, tell him whence it was, and Jesus said, neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Um, so you, we basically see there that, that John had the authority from heaven to baptize. Um, then you ask, well, what's the difference in our baptism? Well, you go to the book of Matthew 28, 20, what's known as the commission. Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. Uh, let me just get there and read it instead of trying to quote it for you. Let me make some changes here on my computer. Go ye there and teach all nations, baptizing them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. So the church has been given the authority uh, to baptize by Jesus, and that's what they're supposed to do. So there is no difference in the baptism. The authority comes from God in both cases. And so we understand they didn't, the, the apostles didn't have to be rebaptized because the authority is not man made. The authority comes from heaven to baptize. John received the authority from heaven. The church receives the authority from heaven. Hence, the baptisms are the same, in my opinion. And that's all I have to say. All right, and that takes us to Troy McGahan, who begged to be fourth for some reason. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> Woo! No, baby, that's in honor of Ric Flair. Anyway, <laughs> uh, all joking aside, uh, the reason I wanted to be fourth is because I knew that where we got to this place, there'd absolutely be nothing needed to add to it. Because we had the great scholars that had already spoken. Uh, seriously, the, there's there's not a lot to add to this. Um, I will say that when it gets down to it, if you don't have baptism, you can't be a member of a church. And if for no other reason there ought to be baptism or we ought to be baptized or, or to... <laughs> Uh, you know, we need to be baptized if for no other reason just to follow Christ because of the baptism that he had, which was John's 
baptism. So, folks, really, everything's been said that needs to be said. I'm not, Abraham Lincoln said something real wise one time. He said, it is better to keep your mouth shut and people think you're a fool than to open your mouth and to remove all doubt. So I'm going to zip it up there and pass it on to you, John. All right, that means it's me that's last. And, uh, boy, Troy just made it sound like there was just nothing else to add. And maybe there's not. Uh, Jason always has something to add. I mean, that's besides the point. Uh, Mark has something to say. Todd's leaving the room. No, uh, let's see. Seriously, everything has that I would have said has been said. Clearly, John's bad. They, the apostles didn't have to be rebaptized. Uh, and baptism is certainly a requirement of church membership today. I think that's pretty simple, borne out in Scripture over and over. Uh, we see it from from Pentec- we see it from, at Pentecost, especially uh, that time period. So, and really even after that, just a very easy concept really to come up with in Scripture. I think. But uh, so, Jason, did you have something you wanted to add? Seriously, you do? Sure. Sure, I can go over some. Um, the only case in the New Testament that would that would make it sound like um, possibly John's disciples have to be rebaptized. Paul runs across some men and has a has a conversation with them, and in the course of that conversation, he asks, "Well, into what were you baptized?" And they said, unto John's baptism. And Paul explained what John's baptism really was. It was a baptism of repentance and believing in Jesus. And then he baptized those men again, so to speak. But my understanding is, and you can go to that passage in Luke 19, or Acts 19, and read it. These men were not actually baptized by John himself. They were baptized by somebody who was baptized by John but not part of the church, and so there was no real authority there, and that was that was the issue. So I just wanted to make sure to mention that. It's not like we don't know that that exists, but it's kind of a different case. See, they got stuff to say. I, I knew if somebody brought that up, this was going to go a lot longer. So, <laughs> all right, Todd, let's hear it. <laughs> well, you know, I appreciate I actually preached on this recently. Uh, I don't remember what the whole sermon was about, but I do remember preaching on this passage. You know, Jason, I, I don't know what you think about this. It's it's debatable that these people were even saved here. I, I mean, they knew nothing about Jesus Christ. They only knew the baptism of John. And when Paul explains it in verse 4, he says, look, John did indeed baptize with a baptism of repentance. But he also said this to the people. He, 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 Paul seems to go further than what they said. He also said that they should believe on him who would come after John. I, you know, that is on Christ Jesus. So it seems to me that they didn't even really know the gospel. They just knew about the baptism of, of John, the baptism of repentance, and that they had no idea that Jesus had come on the scene and he had lived a perfect life and he'd been crucified and, and uh, for our sins, buried and risen again. And, and Paul seems to really complete that message for them. When they heard this, they believed it, then he baptized them, which, again, is as John was saying earlier, is the, the scriptural precedent. That's what we see on Pentecost and several other places. So I, I really don't even think these people maybe were saved. I do. I agree with Jason. I think it's probably a renegade disciple of John the Baptist, if you want to use that terminology. But Anyway, I, I hope I didn't take your point, Mark. All right, Mark, do you want to finish this well, up? Yeah, Mark doesn't have a point about baptism. Mark only has a point that my father quoted that Abraham Lincoln quote to me so many times when I was a young boy. It's better to keep your mouth shut and be assumed a full son than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Um I heard that thing in my sleep. I heard that so often. So I think I like to talk a lot when I was young. So I know that quote well, Todd and Troy. And so I don't know if I've learned it yet or not. But anyway, I was one who heard that quote often. (laughs) 
All right. Well, with that, we hope that we answered somebody's question out there and uh, hope it was a blessing to somebody out there. Hey, if you would, if you have any questions, if you wouldn't mind to put them in the comments below or head over to the website, fiveguysinabible.com. Uh, we're on a Facebook page. Like us over there on, on Facebook. You can always ask questions over there as well. And we'll get to them as much as we can. So once again, we thank you. Good night and God bless.